The first job I had when I uh, graduated was um, I took a temporary job. I worked in a grout company. I will tell you that I didn't even know what grout was. And I would answer the phone and I would say, blah, 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 grout company. Somebody would ask me a question and I would say, one moment, please. And I'd run to the next, <laughs> to the next office to, to ask, what is the answer to that question? But I, I wanted to take the temp job because I knew I could go out for auditions, you know, when they came and nobody would be angry at me. Susan Lucci, this is so exciting. Thank you. I mean, I can't, you must just get stopped constantly everywhere. Well, thank you. Now that I'm out in daylight sometimes, yeah. yes. And, and, and that's very, very um, touching to me, you know, that uh, people stop me and say nice things. You're an icon and you are still busy working. You're taking your turn uh, in the Sensation Celebrity Autobiography. Yes. Uh, this show features actual celebrities reading from autobiographies of other celebrities. Yes. Whose book are, are you going to be reading? Actually, I'm doing two. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be doing um, Ivana Trump, mm. which is so much fun. And the other fun is uh, I, I read from Elizabeth Taylor. I play Liz Taylor. Is it hard to keep a straight face doing it? <laughs> I, mean, I guess you're a good actress. It would be hard for me. <laughs> well, yeah. And you know what's great is that the audience is so uh, having such a good time and laughing that they become part of it. So you're not just an actress. You're also a businesswoman. You have um, activewear, skincare. How do you decide what projects to get involved with? Well, fortunately, I have a husband who's got a great business mind, and uh, you know, so we work together. Uh, the the caveat is that I I must really want to use the product myself. Do you get involved in any of the numbers part, or are you like, you know what, somebody else can do that? The spreadsheets are kind of a fog rolls in. I want to understand that, I, and I so admire people who can do that. Um, fortunately, my husband has a has a, a mind that works that way. That side of my brain. Um, is not as developed. It's interesting you talk about working with your husbands. How do you do it? How do you guys make it work? Well, I really um, just naturally always sought his opinion about the financial stuff and the business things. And I respected him for his knowledge there. Um, we don't work in the same building, so we each bring something to the table and, and there's lots to talk about. But you have and space. Do together. We each have space, yes. and. Um, Something I'm very excited about is um, I have, I'm just in pre-production for a series of mystery movies for Hallmark, and I um, am playing the lead role, but for the first time, I'm executive producer, and I am having the best time. I'm the executive producer not for the finance, but the creative. Mm -hmm. So I've been in from the very beginning, and I'm learning so much, and, and I love that. And this is the first time you've been the executive producer. Susan yes. Lucci, with your storied career, this is the first time. <laughs> it's the first time, so I'm very grateful to Hallmark for putting me in that position. What's your advice to um, people that are at a later stage of their career mm -hmm. and want to do something that they haven't done? What's I your say do them, them, do them. Don't put a label on yourself that keeps you down. You know, if it was your best friend saying that to you, or your daughter, or your, your sister, wouldn't you encourage them? Encourage yourself to go ahead. Let's talk about Erica and all my children. You spent 41 years yes. starring as Erica Kane, 41 years. I mean, that is an incredible work ethic. Where did that come from? The work ethic came from really being very, very happy doing what I was doing and determined to want to do the best I could possibly do. This is a lot of volume every day and a lot of content to do every week, but I want to give it my best. 41 years is a long time. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking, has anyone noticed how long this has been going on? <laughs> yes, yes they did. If you don't love it, there's not enough money in the world. They can pay you. You know, I think the key is to find what you love and do that. I mean, I would be walking into the studio in the morning, call me crazy, but I was, my inside voice was singing. I was happy. <laughs> so that's so much of it. And if you're in a field you feel you don't get to make a difference in or do your best, give yourself a moment to stop and pause 
and think about what it is you really would love to do and take a chance. Because you loved it so much, it must have been um, particularly difficult when All My Children was canceled in 2011. And I mean, all of us really can relate to losing a job. It's disorienting. Yes. Um, it's, it can almost be like a death. I mean, what was it like for you when you realized, I'm not, I'm not going back there on Monday? Yes. It, well. It, it was very much like like a death, and I think all of us who were uh, involved with all my children, first of all, were were shocked, and then there's there's disbelief, and there's anger, and there's hurt, and there's tears, and there's emptiness, and uh, then you make peace with it, and life goes on. So you are doing a celebrity autobiography right now, but you have also written your own autobiography, All My Life. Yes. And you did something that lots of people can only dream of. Uh, you told the world your true thoughts in that, uh, especially about your boss at the time. Uh, you said, a fatal combination of ignorance and arrogance. I mean, <laughs> I think a lot of people want to do that. What, what inspired you to decide to be that honest? Actually, I didn't want to do it. Uh, that's in the paperback version, in the hardcover. We had not yet gone off the air or been told we were going off the air. And then came this shock. The publisher of my book asked me if I would write, if the paperback was in the works, would I please write an extra chapter? And it was four days after we were taken off the air. And I didn't want to do it. You know, I said, oh, you know, this is, I am still feeling very raw about this. And they said, oh, this is great. You're raw, this is what we want. <laughs> So, um, I, so that's why I wrote what I wrote, because <laughs> that was my true feeling about it. Do you regret having done that now? It's not my style to, to write something uh, that has a negative feeling. On the other hand, you know, I felt I owed it to everybody else who was involved. All of us, all of us were in that, and, uh, it was not a pleasant time, you know? I would have felt phony sugarcoating it. You have a lot of grit and resilience. You were nominated 19 times yes. before you took home an Emmy, and you handled those 18 losses with such a wonderful sense of humor and perspective. Thank you. How did you do it? I don't know, I mean, it just, I just thought everybody who was nominated, they were doing such good work, and it's, resent anybody. Sure, I wished it was me. And winning is better. Felt much better when it was my name <laughs> to me. You have a sense of humor about yourself <laughs> as well. Yeah. And that was on full display earlier this year. You took this literal fall at <gasps> the, on the <laughs> runway of the American Heart Association. <gasps> but honestly, it has the most adorable picture. And you just laughed. I mean, I thought, I think that says a lot about you. Did, I mean, what do you, do you, I mean, you just like brush stuff off, it seems. Oh, well, I was so embarrassed. And, and I had worked with this wonderful designer, Ruben Singer, who, oh, this gorgeous gown, which I loved. And it was a very, very big gown. And I, I did practice, you know, backstage twirling, because I knew I wanted to twirl, and they asked me to twirl, and I wanted to. Um, who doesn't want to who twirl? Who doesn't want to twirl? You what are you going to do? You just got to fall and laugh and get back and up. Get back up. <laughs> exactly. OK, so this is our speed round. Are you, Susan Lucci, a saver or a spender? I am a spender. Are you an impulse buyer or an agonizer? I've went from impulse to agonizer. Now I ask, could you please hold that for me? Let me think about it. I'm trying to be more sensible. But impulse is really who I am. I want to go shopping with you. <laughs> uh, if you could design a new $1 bill, who would you put on it? Oh, wow, what a great question. Oh, there would be so many. And of course, right now, I'm thinking of the women's soccer team. Oh, that's fun. You know. A whole I'm, team. A whole team. Where do you keep your Emmy? Oh, I keep it on the mantle in the living room. What did you do with your first growing up paycheck? <laughs> I bought a gown. <laughs> Wow, what was the gown like? I still have it. Oh. Yes. It was really beautiful. It's white. It's all sequined here, but it has some, a couple of chunky diamonds, and uh, then it's all white silk chiffon on the bottom. And the second thing was a coat. And I realized that a 
coat costs the same thing as a gown, but isn't it better to get the coat? Because mm -hmm. you'll get more wear out of it. Yes. <laughs> I had a friend who always said that in New York City, a coat is like your car. And so you should spend a lot on it. I like Because you're that. wearing it everywhere you go. And it gets yes. you from A to B. Yes. Uh, what is the biggest money mistake that you think you've made? I have probably bought too many clothes and too many shoes and too many bags. <laughs> what is your best advice that you've ever received about money? Uh, from my husband. That rather than spend like a mad woman, uh, to save it and let your money work for you. It works for you while you're sleeping. I like this guy. Mm. Susan Lucci, thank you so much.